Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We have a great adventure guide with us today. His name is Rick Aiken. I've known him for many years. We kind of almost kind of launched our ministries almost at the same time. My first book had come out. His first book had come out. We met each other at a Catholic book, book. Uh, um, I guess, um, all the bookstores and everything got, got together and, and all the publishers get together once a year. And we met there and I thought he had such an interesting story. He has such a, a true story, a gritty story uh, about his own, his own walk with the Lord and, um, and how uh, God evolved that into, after him being tested through fire, to have this beautiful uh, ministry in which he, he's really an apologist, but he does it in so many different creative ways. So Rick, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bear. Nice to see you again. Good to see you too, man. So, so talk story a little bit about about yourself, so people can catch up. You had this interesting experience of being married to someone who was a devout uh, Protestant, right? And you're a devout Catholic. And how did, how did you balance that? And how, you had a really unique experience to really understand a lot about the Protestant faith. Yeah, she, uh, my wife uh, had been uh, born and raised Catholic. And then uh, when we had, we have three kids. And um, back in around 2004, she started going to a uh, non-denominational Bible study uh, that was put on by an evangelical church in our area. So we're outside of Chicago and in the Wheaton area. So we're right next to Wheaton College, which is one of the big uh, mm. you know, evangelical colleges in the country. And um, so she went to this Bible study for a while. And after a couple of years, uh, I uh, was asked if we could go to um, her church every other weekend. So that's how we divided things up for, for several years. And um, so I had a firsthand experience with my three children who were at that point between four and 10 years old. Uh, when we started, and we spent about um, eight years or so uh, going uh, to the evangelical church, and then I would take our uh, kids to the to Catholic mass every other weekend. So yep. that was a uh, that was a very immersive well, we learned, uh, situation. Yeah, for us. you learned a lot, and I'm, I bet you got blessed a lot going there too. You know, I, I love uh, in the liturgy of the hour last week, Saint Augustine was writing about schism in the church back in his time, and it's interesting how his his. Uh, what he wrote is exactly the way the Catholic Church sees things. Uh, he said, even though, like if, 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 a, if a member of the Roman Catholic Church was, or the Catholic Church was going to become part of this, this schismatic group, um, that schismatic group would, re, would re-baptize them because mm-hmm. they really didn't consider them to be part of the, right. the church. Right. Um, today, if you're a Catholic, I don't know, maybe it's not true of every denomination, but I haven't heard of an exception to it. If you're if you're going to become a Baptist or a non-denominational person, the first thing to say is, "Oh, you got to get saved. We got to get you baptized, even if right. you were raised in the faith." And so they rebaptize you. Mm-hmm. Now, what's interesting is uh, when Catholics, Catholics, I just got through interviewing Bishop Strickland in the Texas area, and Catholics, he sees himself as the bishop of everyone in his diocese, right. and all Christians he considers part of his flock, whether they're Catholic or not. Mm-hmm. And so, because how can the body of Christ be separated? How can right. there be two bodies of Christ? You know, there's only one body. And so his, his, his point was that, and, and, and so was uh, Augustine's point, is that um, if you are going to become Catholic, all we do is confirm you in the faith. We don't rebaptize you because there's That's only right. one baptism. So we give the dignity to our beautiful non-denominational and Protestant brothers and sisters we give them the dignity knowing that that they are. And St. Augustine said this, which I think is so beautiful. Uh, and for example, in our Bears Man Cave, our ministry that we have where men sign up for a secret Facebook group, we have a lot of Protestants there. And uh, and this is what our, our creed is, basically, as St. Augustine said, if you say our Father, mm-hmm. if you say the our Father, our Father who art in heaven, if you say our Father, then you must be our brother. Mm-hmm. That's a simple, easy way to, good, to build that bridge. And so we love our Calvinist, our evangelical, our non-denominational, 
Our, uh, uh, we love our brothers and sisters. I went to a Baptist university. I went to I went to the Notre Dame Baptist, Baptist yeah. University. I went to Baylor, and <laughs> I found so many beautiful Christians. And I just went back to my reunion last week, and uh, everyone there. I don't think I met any Catholics, but all of them follow our ministry and love what we were doing and just affirming us in our walk with the Lord. And it was just so really, really cool. So I said all yeah. that to lay the groundwork because we're going to go through a dialogue here about some of the differences uh, between what you ran into in the de non-denominational church and what Catholics teach. And mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, and, and the new book, it, by the way, you're an award-winning author. Uh, you you were actually award winning by the Catholic Press Association Novel of the Year. I yeah, last year. Nicodemus. So mm -hmm. you kind of legit. In, in all disclosure and honesty, I won third part, third prize. So. Oh man. <laughs> you know we call that sec, yeah. we call that when we surf we call that second loser. <laughs> there you just go. To, there just you to go. rub it into people, you know. That's so, right. But this new book on uh, what is the exact title again on on the Book of Romans? Roman Romans by Paul. Romans by Paul and oh, I love Saint Paul. So tell me, tell me what motivated you to write this and what's the essence of it? Um, really, it was after I started uh, going to evangelical um, churches and hearing a lot of the challenges that they brought against the Catholic faith, and sitting in the as we were good Catholics, we always sat way in the back up in the balcony. So, uh, so we had that going for us. But my uh, kids, um, you know, at that point, I was hearing a lot of challenges such as, you know, we weren't really Christians because we were Catholics and those type of things. So, um, so that led to my getting into the, um, you know, the uh, writing uh, ministry in the first place. And not too long after that, I started to understand that um, there was a great challenge. One of the greatest challenges, I think, to uh, Catholics uh, comes from non-Catholic uh, Christians because they're not asking you know, when they go and talk to our kids or talk to us, they're not asking us to deny God altogether. They're just saying that we have misread the Bible and therefore we don't understand the gospel and so forth. And it's a lot easier, I think, uh, psychologically for a Catholic to leave the faith if they still think that they're following, you know, Christ. Um, and m almost all of the arguments that I found uh, that were brought up against Catholic faith and defending this different idea of the gospel came from the book of Romans. Uh, so that, that was, uh, I thought at one point, this is probably about 2010 that I needed to take a, a close look at this book of Romans and what Paul wrote in it and see how that corresponds to Catholic uh, teaching versus yeah, what I was being told. Can, it was, you can, you can support almost any, uh, any theology or, or doctrine by take parsing out sentences you right, know, which is right. kind of what what happens when you're in a conversation with someone who wants to wants to uh, have you leave Catholicism. They have these; they'll lift, they'll just pop out a sentence here yep. and there, and of exactly. course, wow, you know. And 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 what happens is is uh, uh, the the Catholics teach that you need to know the whole faith. You can't just mm -hmm. parse it out. You have to hold the, hold the know know the whole faith. That's why you know every, we we teach the Catholic Catechism. I think if you're a Catholic, <clears throat> wow, the the Catholic Catechism, I think it's the most profound book ever written, other than the Bible. It's just mm -hmm. so, it's just so rich. Like almost when I teach it, I do this Ocean Sunrise Catechism. I may teach on one sentence for ten minutes. I mean, it's right, right. every everything is so well spoken and so humbly submitted. Mm -hmm. And so to do that, but then to also right here, you've gone down and said, let's talk about these actual, uh, these actual things that you will run into, um, right? When you when you're talking to some evangelicals, for example, you talked about uh, uh, the Calvinist uh, mm -hmm. uh, approach to understanding the gospel, and we right. run into that a lot. What, can we have about a minute here before we have to take a break? But can you give us the essence of what the Calvinist teaching is before we get back and, and really? Yeah, um, yeah, it's summarized. Uh, so this goes back to the 1600s, and it's summarized by um, the word tulip, uh, T-U-L-I-P, which we can get into more detail. But um, there was uh, a council of the evangelicals or Protestants back in the early 1600s, and those who supported the teachings of Calvin, John Calvin, uh, came up with five attributes uh, that the rest of the Protestants were arguing against, and they summarized those by the by the term tulip. 
Okay, and we, we, we get, yeah, we got to take a break. We're yeah. talking with with Rick Akins. He's the author of the a new book. What's the bu- title of the book again, Rick? Romans by Paul. And what? Where can they find you? Um, I'm at fundamentallycatholic.com. It's and a great, of course, it's a great, great title for you. Great. Title yeah, you. thank you. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Especially, we want to welcome our, our non-Catholic uh, listeners who may not even know Jesus or, or those that, that, that are evangelical or Protestant or, and, and, but love our show because we've got this common ground and that is, is the centricity of Jesus Christ in our faiths. And a lot of people who are not Catholic come, come to us because they have this desire to see the unity of the Spirit uh, in the bonds of truth. You know, they want to see... They want to understand why there's a difference. But also, some people come because there's a lot of angst directed towards Catholics uh, because uh, basically a lot of things are said about us. Well, I heard a priest say this, or you guys believe that, and it's like, well, no, we don't. I mean, if I, Fulton Sheen said, if I believed half the thing, if, if, if Catholicism was half the thing that things that people say it is, I wouldn't be a Catholic either. And so it's a really great way to understand our faith. And one of the things Rick talks about in his book on, on Romans by Paul is uh, that a lot of Catholics have been received their confirmation faith at, in eighth grade, and now they're adults and they're being asked adult questions about their faith, or they really haven't made the effort to, to become f- uh, more fully informed and formed by their faith. So that's why we recommend you read the Catholic Catechism, and that's probably why you're listening to shows like this. And so, Rick, uh, t- talk to us about the basic essence of, of Calvinism. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that, the, the five basic, I guess there's five basic precepts of ca- Calvinism. Right. Um, they, yeah, they call them the five points of Calvinism. And, um, you know, to start with, when you are a Catholic and somebody asks you what you believe, we may not know what we believe in as much detail as we hope, but we oh, all know where to go. There's a lot of details, dude. There is. There is. <laughs> and uh, you brought up the catechism before. You know, I read the, I was reading the catechism on the flight to Boston a few years ago and somebody came up to me afterwards and asked if I was a priest <laughs> because, you know, it just seems like not enough of us re- take the time to read that. So How they figured I must be a priest, right? You should read it. Yeah. You should read every day from the catechism every day. Yep. Um, but- and so when, uh, when we talk about Calvinism, uh, even to this point, there are, um, it's a very, it's a very diverse uh, uh, area compared to Catholicism. So where we would talk, in the book about what's called a five point Calvinist, there are also four point Calvinists. Well, schism so, follows schism follows schism. People who are involved in schism tend to cause more schism. We see really that does, in the woke, yeah. in the woke movement today. Mm-hmm. You kind of start right, tur- right. turning on each other and just just starts splitting and splitting and splitting. Schism causes so, more schism. Yeah. So um, what I tried to do is find you know um, in all the churches we went to. Um, they very often you'll, you'll hear them called Bible churches or I know. Reformed churches. Yeah, yeah but, but you may no, not. Wait, wait, mention that. Yeah. So we're um, a Bible. Kelly, be- well, no, we're a Bible believing church. Bible believing church, right? Where the, so who, um, who canonized the scriptures? R- right, exactly. So you hear well, that a lot. You know, exactly. We're, we're, tell, tell us who canonized well, the scriptures. Oh yeah, Catholic Church, of course. <laughs> right, right. Um, <laughs> And uh, one of the one of the oddest uh, claims I hear sometimes is Catholic Church. We were, um, you know, we were 
a fallible church who defined infallible scriptures, right? So, it, which if you really think about it, doesn't make a lot of sense because if we are fallible, that means we either left the book out that should have been in the Bible or we put a book in the Bible that should not have been in the Bible. Well, they, they right? believe so, we, but they, we believe we put books in that that should have been in. And I know Luther himself kicked out the book of James for a while. He did, and then it for got, a while, right. And then right. it got added as an appendix and then it got added back because he didn't like the scripture verse, it is not by faith alone that we are saved, but by right. works also. Yeah. Right, right. That's right. So um, so I'm trying not to paint like every Protestant into this one area, but the um, the reason I think it's important for Catholics to understand uh, Calvinism, and it will very often go by the name of a Bible church or a community church, those type of things, or a faith covenant church, um, is because, in my experience, they are the ones who are the most aggressive in trying to reach out to Catholics and, and take us away from the church. So well, the big, the big um, three. I'm sorry. The big okay. three to me are solo fide, mm -hmm. sola scriptura, predestination, total depravity. Those are right, the four right. things that I think we can really have a beautiful conversation about. We yeah, can, so the can, idea, exactly, when we talk about five points of Kelvin, it starts with total depravity. So the T in TULIP is for total depravity, which basically means that uh, after Adam uh, sins, that every human being born after that, that our souls have been changed internally to uh, be against God, and that we cannot come to God on our own. Um, and, it, and some take it as far as uh, saying, claiming that, you know, everything that we do is wicked and evil and sinful and so forth. Um, then the next part in Tulip, um, well, that no, becomes let's, stop, a, let's stop there. Sure. Talk about that. I mean, the, the, the basic teaching of Calvinism is that when, the, when you're saved, as they say, you're mm -hmm. covered in the blood. So it's almost, they, they, they use the illustration, you're a dunghill, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which usually means, you know, where you not just throw the garbage, but where you throw your, your byproducts right. of, your, of your, your own human waste. Yep. But you're covered by a blanket of snow, but you're still a dunghill, mm -hmm. which, is quite yeah. di which is quite different than Catholic teaching. Correct, because in the end, where do we end up? We end up in heaven. So the question really ends up being, um, do we think that God wants to live in heaven forever with a bunch of dunghills, right? Whether we're covered by, the, by Jesus, you know, atonement or not. Um, so that's a big difference um, where they are not, um, they see us as totally depraved. And therefore, anybody who does come to faith in Christ uh, only does so because God has reached individually into the, a person's heart and changed us from totally depraved to somebody that has faith, which but still, then begs but the still, question. But still totally depraved. Correct. And then yeah. the question that begs the question, if this, if I'm uh, totally depraved and you're totally depraved and he, and God decides at the beginning of time that, you know, Bear Rosnick is going to be redeemed and Rick Akins will never be redeemed, then, you know, it takes, it, it's nice to be you. <laughs> it's yeah, so nice you, to be evangelical, thinking that you're one that's been picked from all of eternity. So but you, it's pretty bad for me. You know, yeah. And so you're moving, plays, you're moving. You're moving into the next thing, and that's predestination. But I correct. want to say something before we move there, Rick. And that is, you know, anyone who loves Father Robert Spitzer, you know, I have my own man cave cigars. I got to sit down with him and have one of my cigars at the Napa Institute a few years ago with him. And I told him, I really love your book. And then I forgot he was a professor, right? So he started asking me questions about his books on the, the basically I call them the, the, those five, those original five books, I call them about the upward yearning of man. But he talks about each, each man has an upward yearning for, for justice, for truth, for love. And this is an interesting one for beauty. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and then he says for going home, this upward yearning in man kind, which I think we all can agree with. We all want justice. Mm -hmm. We all want love, even if we've never been loved. Even a, uh, a thief doesn't want anybody to steal from him, right? You right, know? right. We all want fairness. that justice. We all want love. And we have this, in, you know, I live in Hawaii, we have this in, intense uh, uh, desire for beauty. Mm -hmm. And we're always pursuing, pursuing truth, whether it's a mathematical equation or or what we want to know the truth we don't want to be lied to and then there's this even when i surf my favorite surf spot out here pops and the tiki lights are lit up at night and i see the rainbow in the distance and the sun is setting i still don't quite feel like i'm home because my mm -hmm. home is right so though that upward yearning in us is evident 
it's uh, it's self-evident that we're mm -hmm. not totally depraved. You see the heroic acts of, of people, you know we're not totally depraved. But but although we have a fallen nature, as right. as we're taught in the Catholic Church, the original right. the original sin. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you just go um, now to any other culture. You don't have to be Christian. You can. You don't have to eventually become Christian to still appreciate beauty, like you said. Right. It's in, and it's, love it's in, and in so our forth. nature. It's in our very nature as human beings. Imagio right, Dei, right. Imagio Dei, made in the image of God. We're not made in the image of depravity. Right, correct. Yep, that's right. And our goal is to become more and more the image of Jesus. Um, so it's not enough just to be uh, convinced that you're personally forgiven of your sins. It's We're called to not just see Jesus, and I make a point about this in the book, we just don't see Jesus as our Savior and have faith in Him as Savior. We also see Him as our Lord. And we, we see that we need to obey our Lord, right? So it's both faith and obedience, a Savior and a Lord. And I think that's the beauty of the Catholic Well, faith. let's dig into that when we come back more about. Now we're going into solo fide. I was at mm -hmm. a surf contest a few years ago, and our, our, our priest came down because the church sponsored one of the surf contest events. And there were people running around, uh, surfers for Jesus, and they were saying, now, okay, go around the beach and ask someone if they've been saved. If they haven't been saved, then share the gospel with them. But they say if they were saved, then go on to the next person. So it's almost like you make a decision for Christ at any time in your life. And once you do that, you're going to heaven. Right. Uh, that's and that, right. that's yeah. not faith. That's presumption. Right. Exactly. That's a totally different thing. And so when we come back, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into these great Roman words. We like to, Catholics like to talk Latin, you know. So yes, right. we're going to talk about <laughs> solo fide, and we'll talk about sola scriptura and other fancy words when we come back. We're talking with Rick Akins. I really admire this man. I know what his personal journey has been, and he stayed true to the faith. And even though, uh, you know, as, as men were tested as if going through a fire, I've seen him come out just, uh, just a beautiful example of Jesus Christ. We'll be right back with more of the Bear, of the Bear Wozniak adventure. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men. Yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, we got to say a couple things. We forgot to mention, we want you men to join Bear's Man Cave. Bear's Man Cave, you can join by going to uh, our website, deepadventure.com. And clicking on uh, clicking on the join the cave, and you'll be welcomed there by our membership director Pat Gervais, and uh, you'll be invited into a ment mentoring relationship. And we have a secret Facebook group you become a member of, and we have Zoom meetups a couple times a week, I mean a couple times a month. Um, and then we have an, uh, uh, something beyond that called the School of Manliness, which you'll be invited to, to participate in. So men, go to deepadventure.com, click on Bears Man Cave. And for our beautiful mama bears out there, you know who you are. I saw you yesterday at Mass. I love the mama bears that are there with their, uh, with their families, and especially love the mama bears who are there sitting by themselves, faithful to their love for Jesus, but the man in their life, the men in their lives are not there with them. Uh, and you're the ones, it's your prayers that make our ministry run. And so we have a special heart for the mama bears. You know, when you subscribe to our newsletter at our website, there's a special section every week just for the mama bears. And we have a new secret Facebook group uh, for the mama bears too. But if you join the mama bears, you get this really cool uh, Catholic motorcycle biker. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see this image. We have about 40 of these left, so for the next 40 people, you get to you get this when you join the Mama Bears too, along with your more roar and every poor uh, uh, long ride home mug. 
a coffee mug. Anyway, enough enough about that. But if you haven't visited our website, go to deepadventure.com, subscribe to our emails, join the man cave, join Mama Bears, and uh, become part of uh, become part of our Ohana. We have with our guest today Rick Aiken. He's the author of the new book called What Rick? What's the name of it? Romans by Paul. Romans by Paul. One of my favorite guys, dude. I, I have in front of me here. I got about. I have right here like about. 50 pages of notes on just just on his life. I'm a big St. Paul fan. I've studied and studied and studied his life. I've been in the footsteps of St. Paul. He was a gnarly dude. He was a tough guy. He was. And, no, uh, don't doubt about it. He was tough. So, uh, so, um, But he wrote a letter to the Romans outlining our faith. Um, and we're talking though, particularly about uh, the Calvinist view, beautiful brothers and sisters uh, who we may appreciate more than they appreciate us. We love the fact that they they love Jesus, uh, but we've been talking about the the different some of their different um, things that they believe. First, we talked about uh, solo fide, or we talked about total depravity, and now let's talk about solo fide, where it, it, they it is not by you know we believe as Catholics. Um, well, it, describe what they mean by that uh, by faith alone. So that that basically means uh, pretty much what it says, which is that um, when the uh, Reformation happened, they saw the Catholic faith and they thought, well, here's all these other things, the sacraments and the feasts and everything that Catholics do. And they were trying to edge people away from that. And so the only thing that they saw necessary for um, being forgiven by uh, God was uh, faith in Jesus. So um, that's how they came up with it, sola fide, fide meaning faith. So it's faith alone in Jesus alone. And it's kind of, you know, when you hear that as a Catholic, you ask the question to the, uh, to the evangelical, well, who do you think that we have faith in if not Jesus, right? Of course, we have faith only in Jesus as our Savior. He's our only Savior. Uh, the difference is we also understand that our life with God is not just one of faith. It's one of obedience as well, because Jesus is not just our Savior, but our, but our Lord. And you can't be a Lord um, you know, if you're not actually following that person. So um, that's uh, the meaning of uh, sola fide, which is that um, it only requires uh, an ascension you know, mentally to faith in Jesus as, and, and as Savior. Him, and inviting him into your life. Mm-hmm. Right, right. right. It's not a, that, yeah. And that's I, a, I was going to say, it's not that evangelicals don't think they have to obey. They just don't think it affects their salvation in, in any way. Yeah, and that it's a beautiful thing because they're inviting Jesus Christ to become in as the Lord and Savior, but they tend to fo- focus on the Savior biz and not the Lord biz part of things. Right, know? that's right. But, that's but right. you know, it, it's it, you know, but the misunderstanding is we are, we're told as Catholics by Protestants that we believe that the way you get to heaven is Catholics teach that you have to work your way to heaven, and that's not what we teach. Uh, we refuted that heresy probably eighteen hundred years ago. It was called the heresy of Pelagianism that said you can, by your own efforts, become perfect and worthy of heaven. And we don't believe that at all. We as Catholics believe that you need faith in God and cooperation with God. Um, in fact, Martin Luther kicked out the, 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 the book of the Bible that, that has these words. The only place in the scripture that I know where the words faith alone exist, which is kind of one of the pillars of, of Calvinism, is where it says it is not by faith alone that you are saved, but by works also. But these aren't the works of the law that role, that Paul was talking about. We're not saying you have to be circumcised. We're not saying you can only walk so many steps on a Sabbath. That's what Paul was talking about. He wasn't talking about morality. He wasn't talking about virtue. Um, he wasn't excluding the need to be virtuous. Uh, the Bible even says, work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. So we have that initial uh, experience of conversion. And we won't go into the depths about that, but our beautiful bro- brothers and sisters in the Protestant faith, they have this moment when they give their life to Jesus. And what a beautiful thing that is. We, we experience that uh, sacramentally at baptism, but we, re- we renew that at confirmation, uh, our devotion and commitment to the Lord. But we must, must walk worthy of, of the way in which we've been called. And so it's interesting, isn't it? Um, uh, how, how, do you, how do you deal with that statement, sola fide, it's only by faith that you're saved? Yeah, so, uh, so if you look at uh, why I picked uh, Romans uh, for the main thrust of this book is because you read that uh, quite often in Romans 4, uh, chapter 4, chapter 5, where Paul is talking about works and saying that if it's by works, that means that God 
owes us something and therefore um, it's not grace. And so that's kind of the, the core um, challenge that people bring to the Catholic faith. Um, but the, the flip side is exactly what you said. If you read the, the entire book of Romans, you'll see from chapter one to chapter 15 that his main task, uh, Paul's main task is trying to bring Gentiles and Jews together under Jesus together. So mm-hmm. what he's saying when he talks about the works don't save us is he's talking to his fellow Jews at the time to say all these works that we used to do, just like the ones you, um, you referenced, um, those works trying to do um, all of these different tasks uh, by the Old Testament law without Jesus is not going to save you. So if you're Jewish and you're now in the Christian church, you're not any better off than these Gentiles who didn't have God at all before. Um, so um, that's, that was his main focus. And to understand whether he thinks that our actions and our disobedience matter, then you just have to go to Galatians chapter five, Ephesians chapter five, uh, Corinthians. Well, give, us, give, us, the, give us one of those. Um, I don't have it memorized, but if you're in Galatians oh, 5 or Ephesians you don't 5, have a memorized. No, no. You need your seven-point memorized. That, 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 that's that, just that, it about, about Catholics, how we don't always memorize our scriptures. But no, but I mean, it, it, we, we, um, we, 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 it, and it only makes uh, sense, too, to us, you know, that, that we, we, we give our lives to the Lord, and then we work out our salvation, um, and we have that cooperation with God's grace. And that, that continues on in Catholic teaching, I think, Rick, when you think of if you're totally depraved and then by faith alone you're saved, and it's almost like at the moment you die, die you're presto change or made perfect, right. Um, right. And, and now you're in heaven, it's like that doesn't really give the person dignity. Uh, but the Catholic, the Catholic teaching is you've given your life. To, and by the way, we love, 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 love our, our, our Protestant brothers and sisters. Love them because they're brothers and sisters in Christ. But um, the Catholic understanding is that we give our life to the Lord. We, we, we have all these other sacramental graces and things, but we're, we're, we're wanting, uh, he must increase, I must decrease. The died self, mm-hmm. you know, he who finds his life will lose it, he who loses his life will find it. That concept of, of winning, giving our lives more and more over to Christ. And that goes on on our earthly journey as we hopefully mm-hmm. become more and more like Jesus. Um, and then when we die, some people have got, are there. They've, they've, they've given themselves into total nuptial union, as we say, with the Lord. And so when they go to heaven, they're just in, they just are there in, in the presence of the Lord. But for some of us, when we, go to he- when, we, when we die, we go to a place, a part of heaven, that's called purgatory. And it's just that place where whatever is left in us of selfishness and, and, and uh, uh, you know, I guess that's it selfishness and pride is burned out of us uh, by looking at the seeing the beatific vision we see the Lord and it's painful but there's a there's a it's an anguish not not physical anguish but there's an anguish of our soul that we gradually are able to say not me but you Lord so it's not like we're instantly changed it's like there's there's this process here on earth when we die we see Jesus face to face. We're in a part of heaven called purgatory, and then the fi- and then that final purgation takes place, and then we're fully, fully in the presence of the Lord. So, um, talk to us. Does that is that about? Say it right. Yeah, and say it's it not in, in the misnomers. It's not a punishment for the sins as much as it's you know we're going to spend eternity with God. You know, so it's a great blessing that God's giving us to be able to spend that eternity without our pride and our anger and our, you know, all the things, all the sins that well, are left as part of our soul when we die. Let's talk about that. There's this concept. Oh, you know, we got to take a break. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. This 
This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our guest today is Rick Aiken. He's got a book uh, on the Book of Romans uh, explaining the differences between uh, m what most Protestant evangelicals believe and what uh, Catholics believe. And if you're an evangelical or if you're a Protestant, you're our brother and sister. That's what St. Augustine wrote. That's what the Catholic Church teaches. Uh, St. Augustine said, if you say our father, then you're our brother. Uh, we just may not be in full communion. But Rick, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thank you. We, we're gonna we gotta we gotta switch topics. We were gonna go real deep uh, on sola fide, but we gotta go we gotta go uh, uh, into another area of difference between what the Protestants believe and the and, and the Catholics believe. We've talked about total depravity. We've talked about uh, sola fide, once saved, always saved. Should we talk about predestination? Sure, sure. So uh, and this is the core of the book uh, Romans by Paul, because uh, I heard over and over again that <clears throat> the defense. Of predestination and that's the idea that before time god picked certain people individually for uh for eternal salvation and therefore did not pick other people from all eternity for salvation so and in a way if you think about it tying that together with total depravity um, really is the crux of the problem because if God is our creator, then if Adam sinned and everybody became totally depraved after that, it's because God decided to make everybody totally depraved, right? There's nothing inherent in Adam's sin to make us totally depraved. God is still our creator. and He's the one that makes our souls. So if he makes our souls and then determines that most human beings who have ever been born are doomed to hell because we're totally depraved, you know, that becomes a big, a big theological problem. And what I heard over and over from evangelical pastors is that if you go to Romans chapter nine, they talk about Joshua or uh, Jacob and Esau and that God uh, quotes the old Testament where it says that God, even before they were born, chose Jacob and not Esau, you know, to, to bless. And they're saying, well, it was fair for God to do that, so it must be fair for him to totally or to predestine uh, people to hell. And um, that's not really, as we talked about in the last session, that wasn't uh, Paul's purpose in writing Romans 9 or any part of Romans. What he was trying to do, again, was compare Jewish, uh, the Jewish people from the Old Testament and the Gentile people so he could bring everybody together in one church under Jesus. And if you look at his use of Jacob and Esau, he was just following the Old Testament pattern where the, J Jacob was used repeatedly throughout the whole uh, of the Old Testament as a representative of, Ju of the Jewish uh, people, and Esau was the Gentile people. So if you look at it from that standpoint, um, then it, it moves us away from this idea of total depravity and predestination. Um, so when Jesus came to earth, he didn't just come to offer uh, atonement to a limited number of people. And that's another part of this idea of tulip, this idea of limited atonement, where Jesus purposely only came to save, you know, bear what was an act, but not to save Rick Aikens. And, and instead, we know Jesus came to, to offer salvation and a path back to him through forgiveness to everyone, uh, Jew and Gentile alike, man and woman alike. And um, so that's uh, a big uh, difference in just our, our worldview, our outlook on what God, um, what his relationship is with his well, people. Well, there, there are, you know, I, I love it. The, the, the Bible says, I, I would that not, that all men would be saved, that none would perish. Right. But there's also the, these these elements of, under, of predestination that are mentioned here and there. Uh, those who he predestined, those he also foreknew. And, mm -hmm. and so now, you know, like last night, my wife and I are watching, a, I love cosmology, the birth of the universe. And we're watching cosmo cosmology and we're thinking um, uh, uh, about, you know, this, this, this concept of time. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, the Hebrews had a concept of Kairos and Kronos. Kronos is like the chronometer, the watch. It's, it's, the, it's, the, li it's the linear uh, movement through time. But I remember, this is the, I think this is how, how the Lord sees 
what that how, a good way to apply that verse is. When I was a kid, I loved it, man. We were in first grade, and we were supposed to color the history of the of Manifest Destiny. You know, moving from the east to the west coast. You know, right. we draw we drew pictures of the Conestoga wagons, and then the mountains, and in this journey. And I could see the whole journey of a hundred years on this. Each took, each of us took a little part of this big butcher block paper on the this length of the classroom. I could see in a moment all that happened in that hundred years. Uh, but that doesn't mean that within that time, the people that were on those marches had their own, their own um, free agency. And so God, God gives us free agency, uh, but it's, we have that liberty to choose to obey or not to obey. But, but because God is out, time, out of time and outside of time and space, mm-hmm. I mean, time was created the moment he said, let there be light. Um, because he's outside of time and space, he can see all of that, and he can see what your choices are, and yet he's also faithfully working in you to 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 uh, respond to him and to affirm him and to say yeah, to y- say yes to, to him. So in that sense, God can see, but it's not like he he made you do what you did. You still had free agency. It's, so it's right. a mystery. It's hard yeah. to talk about, but yeah, but it, that the, the part that you just quoted that's from, also from Romans. That's chapter uh, eight. And um, most uh, evangelicals I listen to, um, and again, the book is not anti-evangelical at all. It's simply to lay out that there may be a different interpretation of, of Romans and different interpretation of the writing of Paul that's more in line with Catholicism. So that's kind of the, the thrust of it. And this is a good example in chapter eight. You know, it does talk about pre-ordination, uh, foreknowledge, and so forth. But if you like, get skipped, it's the verse right before it, which is verse 28. And in verse 28, it's, it tells us who is on that path of, of uh, foreknowledge and, and so forth. And, that's for, and Paul says that's for those who love God. Well, how do we love God? Right? It's, not just, we, it's not just that we love God only if he changes our souls. Um, Jesus told us in John what he, de- he defines as love for him and love for God. And that's obedience, right? So what Paul's basically saying is for those who love God and who, who obey God, they're on this path. And, and thus, and he tells us in other parts of Romans and elsewhere that we can at some point fall off that path, right? If we don't love God anymore. Um, so that's the, one of the big differences that I was trying to get uh, across you know, in this book. So, um, so, we, so let's go back to this. Um, I really think there's, I mean, there's tremendous persecution against Catholics. People don't understand. Maybe there is, maybe people sense that from Catholics uh, towards Protestants, um, especially historically uh, at times. Uh, there's been tremendous uh, problems there, schism, I mean, debt, you know, a lot of, a lot of persecution uh, maybe on both sides. Calvinism especially was persecuted against, persecuted Catholics. Um, uh, but, but we 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 uh, stand with our Protestant brothers and sisters. Right now, more than ever, we need to come together and stand together because there's a coming persecution. Uh, we're seeing it even more and more. People who stand for their faith, they not, may not be murdered, but they're not involved in the next business deal, or their yeah. career is kind of stopped because oh, mm-hmm. you didn't want to be part of the gay pride committee. Well, then you know you're. We just, it's not like it's overt, it just kind of happens. And so we as Christians, Protestant and Catholic, we need to stand together. But we need to come together around the unity of, the, uh, around the unity of understanding truth. And ca- I've had some Christian friends of mine that read the Catechism, and they're just astounded how beautiful it is. And also one of them said, what is, what is the thing that you found the most profound about the Catechism? How humble it was. Mm-hmm. how it presented for me to consider that it didn't attack uh, Protestant beliefs. Uh, right. it, it, just, it just showed the contrast, which is what your book does. Yep. Where can they find yeah, your book? And, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, that was uh, really what aided me the most and gave me the most comfort when I read in the Catechism that you know, we see our, anyone that is baptized properly in the Trinity as our brothers and sisters. Yeah, if they're baptized right? in the name of the so. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, if they decide they want to come into fellowship with the Catholic Church, we don't rebaptize them. It just really underlines 
the dignity that we show our brothers and sisters. I love, 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 love my Protestant friends. I mean, I, I, I was miraculously healed of a severe back problem uh, when uh, Protestant Protestants prayed for me. And, and I mean, I'm talking about de totally debilitating for a y 13, 14, 15 years. And I followed uh, that by winning two world titles in the national in tandem surfing. So, I mean, I, I have no doubt <laughs> that these people love Jesus and Jesus loves them and that they're in fellowship with God and the Holy Spirit. But we just, we're having this, we're doing this today so we can start bringing uh, understanding so people understand each other better. We got, we already ran out of time, Rick. We got to go. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. They can find you at what website? fundamentallycatholic.com until next week everybody may the breath of the holy spirit aloha you aloha hey man i don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.